Hi, I'm Michelle Somerfield. I thought on this Monday it would be a great day to talk about reading books. Now, I know we are into 2021. We've just begun the third month of the year, and we've been in lockdown for the COVID virus for almost a year now. It's been a really great time to read more because we're not able to go out and socialize the way we used to. I have been reading a lot more lately. Now, I've been reading a lot of self-help type books and paranormal books and also some memoirs. And of course, I've written my own memoir called Marilyn, Not Just Another Girl, The Myth About Sleeping in the Nude. This came out in the latter part of 2019, and I will be following it up with a couple more books. But I wanted to talk again about a book that my friend Steve Jordan wrote. He wrote, Somehow I Survived, A Memoir of a Lost Soul. And um, I talked about this book in the summertime when it first came out, or maybe it was in the fall, I don't know. Uh, but I know I talked about it before in 2020, and I thought I would talk about it again, because some books just kind of fill your time. They kind of give you something to do. You know, they're lighthearted. They are interesting for an hour or two or half a day or whatever. But this book actually kind of sticks with you, I think. I think the key word in the title is survived. <laughs> now, um, my friend Steve, his author name is S.M. Jordan. So look for him under that pen name if you look for him on Amazon or in some other, you know, book selling arena. <laughs> but um, I was thinking this is a book that really has, I think, a great message. I've said before, I think Steve represents the everyman. He isn't focused on Hollywood glitz and glamour. He isn't focused on fancy cars. He isn't focused on image and selfies and a bunch of self-promotion and that sort of thing. He's focused on getting through life and doing the best he can for himself and for his wife. And his book tells a story about his childhood, things he and his family and friends went through, up into adulthood where he met the love of his life. But you know, everybody's life has so many different twists and turns. And one of the reasons I can relate to this book is he talks at one point about during his childhood when his father, who's been fabulous had a great work ethic, been with the same company for a long period of time, refuses to bend some rules, and, you know, basically due to his own integrity, is let go from his job, and then has to find another way to make a living. And I know the same thing has happened to my own father at a couple of points in his life. I remember back in 1975, he got laid off, and then he got laid off again. I don't know if it was the late 80s or early to mid 90s, but he found other employment. But the point is, I think this is all very relatable and things that happen to one person in a family kind of trickle down and affect everyone in the family, at least for a period of time. And I know that during this COVID season, a lot of people have had had to change the location of where they do their job. A lot of people are working from home. Some people's hours have been cut back. Some people have completely lost their jobs. Some people have had to change profession or have had money worries. You know, and I think again, I will say it over and over, I think the key word here is survived. I think this book is about constantly having momentum, constantly having short-term, um, what do you want to say, accomplishments 
or little things that happen in your life that lift you up and lift up your spirits, but also having long-term goals. At one point in this book, Steve talks about the stress of purchasing a new home and not even being sure you're going to be qualified to do that. Um, I know that there's one point in the book that really made a big impression on me where he talks about finding the right woman and he talks about how she didn't expect him to buy things for her. Now, we all buy things for our loved ones here and there, but I know there's a lot of emphasis on material possessions. And um, I know I've been in situations back in my youth where I thought that if a guy bought me a pretty piece of jewelry, basically that that was some kind of validation that he really was in love with me, you know? And sometimes you can wait and wait and wait for something that's never gonna come, or when you get it, you get it under such strange circumstances that it kind of loses half its meaning. I've also been in relationships before with guys who were very into trying to impress other people. They cared more about impressing other people with flashy things than they did about working on their relationships. Um, I have been with guys who, who thought that the be all and the end all was to get rich quick, fancy vacations, you name it, whatever, they're very materialistic. <laughs> and so one of the, thing, the things I really appreciated in here was Steve outright saying that he found someone who didn't expect him to buy her things. Because I think relationships are about so much more than just material things and um, impressing other people with what you've got. You know, and certainly during this COVID time period, there are a lot of people who are strapped, you know, or there are a lot of people who just can't take the fancy vacation that they've been saving up for. There are a lot of people who have a great wardrobe in their closet, but no place to go because they're trying to stay home and stay safe, or they don't feel so great dressing up in their fancy expensive clothes, but having to cover half their face with a protective mask, right? So in this day and age, it seems like sometimes the simple things are the things that are most meaningful. For instance, if there's a big snowstorm, you might help somebody, you know, plow, or, or you might help them um, scrape off the car if they do have to go somewhere, or to clear the driveway of snow. Or you might be the one who volunteers to go to the grocery store for the week, even if you have to wear a mask and it's hard to breathe for an hour while you're in the grocery store. Or you might be the one that does the dishes or at least makes sure you're not leaving dishes all over the house, you know, because we're all homebound more. So even though that isn't discussed in Steve's book, I really, um, I really felt like it hit a nerve when I read that part where he said that part of finding a woman who was good for him was finding someone who didn't expect him to buy her things. Because all of us, male or female, whatever our relationships are, can demonstrate to one another that we love and care about them in more giving ways other than purchasing things. And I think that's important too, because during the time period we're living in, again, like I said, with the COVID virus, a lot of people are maybe strapped for cash, don't have what they had before. And, um, but I think this book is just chock full of interesting stories. I said it before and I'll say it again. It's got so many good little stories that make up the whole story that you can sit down read for 10 minutes, read for a half hour, get up, do your laundry, go to an appointment, make dinner, do whatever you have to, and you still feel like you've come away with something during that short period of time that you've been reading the book, and yet you want to get on to the next part of the book to see what Steve's adventures are. I think that a really important thing to keep in mind is that in life, it's not about how many times you've been knocked down, it's all about how many times you've picked yourself up. And I just, I can tell 
Steve is a very intense person who doesn't give up on himself. And I think that that's a really important lesson. Now, during this COVID period of time, this is the kind of book I think would be really great for family to read and share, because maybe around the dinner table, you could discuss, well, what did you learn from a situation that you read in Steve's book? Or what is your favorite story within the bigger story in Steve's book? I think you can read a lot of different books um, because we're all staying indoors more. But this is one I would highly recommend. I would recommend S.M. Jordan's Somehow I Survived, A Memoir of a Lost Soul. And I would also look out for his up and coming book. I know he's working on a second book and maybe it'll even be out in 2021. I don't know. I know my book is going to be out. I have a second book coming out in 2021 as well. I highly encourage people to read. I think that there's so many good types of books. I think fiction's great. I think nonfiction's great. I think poetry can be really inspiring. But these are two books I highly recommend. And, you know, my book has elements of reincarnation in it. I 100% know that reincarnation is for real. But one of the things that's extra special about Steve's book is, is it's all about his current lifetime. So his resilience and all of the stories that he talks about in his book are relevant to his Steve life <laughs> and um, are, are in a time period in which you can probably relate, right? And, and sometimes that's a really good thing. I know when I read it, you know, I, I, I grew up during the 70s and 80s and, and then even was a young adult during the 90s. So I could really relate to his book. And I know that a lot of people in our age bracket in our late 40s or 50s, I'm 56, you know, a lot of us are really trying to hold our families together during the COVID period of time. And so to have a book written by somebody who is in our age bracket and who has lived during the time periods that we can relate to, I think is also a really nice thing. So again, I want to say I highly recommend Steve Jordan, S.M. Jordan's book, Somehow I Survived. And I know it's on Amazon and in a couple other places where you can buy it. I recommend it.